Hello again. In the last lesson, we saw different opinions about effective computing. We saw critics of effective computing and their reasons. We saw supporters of effective computing and their reasons. In this lesson, we will read section 2, החלק השני של הטקסט. This section deals with the limitations, מגבלות, of effective computing and possible solutions. When we checked the eye-catching features, we saw the section heading of section 2 was imitation of life, חיקוי, imitation, not limitation, although they sound similar. How do we know that this section talks about limitations? We will see how this section begins. Let's zoom in on the first sentence of this section in paragraph 17. But there are limits to how lifelike the agent can be. Lifelike, lifelike, כמו בחיים האמיתיים. כלומר, יש מגבלות על העניין, יש גבול עד כמה אפשר לעשות את זה דומה לחיים האמיתיים. And now we see the connection to the title. There's a limit to how much you can make Laura look like a real person. After all, she's just an imitation, like the title says. So effective computing deals only with imitation of life, not life itself. And this is its main limitation. So now we have a main topic of the section, limitations of effective computing. This is one of the main ideas the writer will talk about. To find out what the limitations are, we need to read the text. Before we do that, let's do some skimming for this section. Remember, skimming a section means reading the beginning of each paragraph. Why should we do that? Well, this is a long section. We do not need it all. Skimming section two will help us decide what part of the text we need to read to find the limitations. So, let's do this together. We already read the beginning of paragraph 17. The writer starts talking about limitations here. Let's go on to the next paragraph, paragraph 18. Another key feature of lasting relationships is the ability to read moods and know when not to intrude. כלומר, תכונה מרכזית של מערכות יחסים מתמשכות, כנראה בין בני אדם ולא מכונות, היא היכולת לקרוא מצבי רוח ולדעת מתי לא להפריע. Can machines do this? Maybe this is a limitation of machines. We will read more when we read the text. Let's go on to skim the next paragraph. Let's zoom in on the first sentence in paragraph 19. So Nass and Picard are working with psychologists to create software that can recognize the signs that show when people need a hand and when they don't. Hmm. Nass and Picard, remember them? They are supporters of effective computing. They are working on something. That sounds like a solution. Let's continue with the skimming for one more paragraph. Paragraph 20. Let's zoom in on the first sentence in paragraph 20. In addition to helping students persevere to the end of their mathematics homework, Picard is working on a modified version for UK call centers. Hmm. We do not need to understand every word here to understand that Picard is helping students in their math homework. And the words in addition tell us that she is doing even more. This sounds like some very practical application of effective computing. Let's sum up our skimming. The skimming showed us that paragraphs 17 through 18 will probably refer to problems or limitations. Paragraph 19 will probably refer to solutions. And paragraph 20 will probably refer to specific practical applications. Why do I say probably? Because this is only the skimming. The skimming lets us predict. We still don't know. We still need to read the text. So now we need to start reading. Now let's get more specific. 
we know we will see limitations and we know we will see possible solutions. So here's our question. What are the limitations of effective computing? Find two. And what are the possible solutions for each limitation? Because we need a solution for each limitation, it will help you if you write your answer like this. One, limitation, solution. Two, limitation, solution. To answer, read paragraphs 17 through 19. We will not focus on paragraph 20 and onward. Also, tip. Limitations and solutions may appear together in the same paragraph. So read carefully. Press pause and come back when you're ready. You're back. Great. Let's see some answers. We will start with paragraph 17. In the first sentence of this section, we read, but there are limits to how lifelike the agent can be. We spoke about this. A virtual character like Laura will never be like a real person, right? Well, this is a limitation. We found one. The writer says more about this in paragraph 17. Let's see. Although Laura has a voice, users must type their responses. Interactive speech allows the user more freedom than the software can cope with. כלומר, למרות שללורה יש קול, המשתמשים צריכים להקליד את התשובות שלהם. שיחה רגילה, אינטראקטיבית, היא מעבר ליכולת של המכונה. It seems that effective computing is not good enough yet to deal with a human voice. It's not good enough yet with interactive speech with humans. This is a specific problem that relates to not being lifelike. It's part of the same limitation. So we already found a limitation. Effective computing is not lifelike. It can't cope with interactive speech. If we keep on reading paragraph 17, we see one of our research areas is to see how we can get the system to regularly synthesize fresh content. How we can get sounds like they are trying to get something to solve the problem, a possible solution. אחד מתחומי המחקר שלנו הוא לראות כיצד אנחנו יכולים לגרום למערכת לשלב או למזג תוכן חדש באופן קבוע. אחת הבעיות של דיבור רציף היא שיש תוכן חדש כל הזמן, והוא לא קבוע. מילים חדשות, טון חדש, אינטונציה משתנה. כל זה צריך להיכנס לתוך מערכת המחשוב. ומערכת המחשוב צריכה להיות מסוגלת להעריך את זה בזמן אמת ולהגיב על כך. ולזה מנסים למצוא פתרון. This is a big challenge for effective computing. This is why it's a whole research area. If we continue with paragraph 17, we see the writer says, or we could have a room full of people writing dialogue for digital agents. This sounds like an alternative solution, another solution. Or we have something else and we could, something else that we could do. If people work on writing dialogues for a virtual character, then maybe the machine will interact better with humans. So, we have an answer to the solution for limitation number one. Solution, we can get the system to regularly synthesize fresh content. Or, we could have a room full of people writing dialogue for digital agents. Now, let's go on to the next limitation and its solution. Let's zoom in on paragraph 18. Another key feature of lasting relationships is the ability to read moods and know when not to intrude. Yes, reading moods is very important in relationships. But let's see if effective computing has the ability to read moods. Let's keep on reading. Without this, you get something like Microsoft much despised office assistant, clippy the paper clip, the word without in the beginning tells us immediately that effective computing does not have this. Notice also the word despised, sanu, very negative. Yes, here we have one more limitation. Effective computing does not have the ability to read moods. 
אין לו את היכולת לקרוא מצבי רוח. זה בהחלט עלול להיות מעצבן. The end of the paragraph reads, It's likely to hobble your productivity, not improve it. Now, how are they trying to solve this? What is a possible solution? Let's zoom in to the beginning of paragraph 19. We see that NASA and Picard, remember, are supporters of effective computing. So NASA and Picard are working with psychologists to create software that can recognize the signs that show when people need a hand. Nice, they are working with psychologists. Psychologists certainly know about moods. They are working with psychologists to create software that can see when people need help. Interesting. So we found our solution. They are working with psychologists to create a software that can recognize when people need help. Or they are trying to create software that can read moods. Well, we are ending our lesson now. We did a lot. What did we learn? We found some limitations of effective computing, and we also found some possible solutions to these limitations. How did we learn this? We learned this by focusing on section two. We first did some skimming to locate the answers, then focused on reading paragraphs 17 through 19. Effective computing is a new technology. There is still much more to do and to improve. Who knows what the future holds? In the next lesson, we will sum up what we learned in this unit and what we already know about effective computing.